Hi guys! Today I'll be taking a look at one of the cheapest laptops you can get that features the new AMD Ryzen 4000 series mobile CPU, the Acer Swift 3. Now this is a very light and a very compact 14-inch laptop with a 6-core Ryzen 5 4500U processor, 8 gigs of RAM and a full HD 60Hz IPS panel. Now it's not a gaming laptop as there is no dedicated GPU, but you can still pull some gaming out of it. I paid 699 euros for this model that comes with a 500 gig SSD, which pretty much makes it the cheapest new Ryzen 5 laptop on the market, at least here in the Netherlands. And there's also an 8 core Ryzen 7 version, but unfortunately, Acer doesn't really sell it in many regions around the world, including the Netherlands. Anyhow, let's check it out and see what makes it good and what Acer had to do to keep it so affordable. Let's go. This video is brought to you by iFixit and their ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit has all the tools and accessories you need to repair your hardware, whether it's a PC, phone, tablet, console, and so on. It is made of great quality materials, and iFixit backs that claim up with a lifetime warranty. Get yours using the links in the description below. The first thing you notice when you pick it up is how light it actually is with a weight of only 1.2 kilos. Now, build quality isn't on the Dell XPS level of amazing, but it's still quite good considering the price. It is mostly made of metal, even though it's really thin, it looks nice, it feels all right, and the finish is on point. It is also quite thin. Now, it's not the thinnest laptop in the world, but thin enough without having to sacrifice traditional USB ports. You get two USB Type-A ports, one USB Type-C port, an HDMI connection and an audio jack, and you get a fairly typical charger with it, but the USB Type-C port does support charging, so you can pretty much hook it up to a smaller USB charger when you're on the go. You can't really open it with one hand as the hinge does have some resistance. The display itself feels sturdy and doesn't flex much, but the keyboard side does show some flex. When it comes to the keyboard itself, it is fairly typical, but I personally actually like that. It is not too light, there is enough travel, it has white backlight, and it's just very easy to get used to. It even comes with a fingerprint reader, which I didn't really expect at this price point. But do keep in mind that white backlit keys look great in the dark, but there is no contrast between the white characters and the silver keys on the keyboard in a bright environment. And that might be a bit problematic if you are that kind of a user that looks at the keyboard while typing. Now, the touchpad is surprisingly good, in my opinion at least. It's a plastic surface, but it's nice, it is smooth, it is very responsive. It just reacts really well. There is no big sliding resistance and it's just really comfortable to work on. Again, do not expect an XPS or a MacBook level here, but keep in mind most laptops in this price class have a touchpad that just feels much, much worse. So let's talk about that CPU. The Ryzen 5 4500U is a six core CPU, but unlike most Ryzen 5 products, it doesn't have multi-threading. So it's a six core, six thread CPU. And the U at the end means it's a low power version. So this one is rated at 15 watts, while the CPU models ending with an H can go up to 45 watts. All of that means that you shouldn't really expect this to be as powerful as those higher end options. Still, if you look at some benchmarks, uh, this CPU shows some really excellent results. Even without multi-threading, it still destroys the 8th gen Intel Core i5s that you will see in many laptops in this price class. It is generally faster than the Ice Lake Intel Core i7 in the Razer Blade Stealth 13 and the Dell XPS 13 that cost much more. And it's faster than high power AMD CPUs from previous generation. Now, all this means that this affordable laptop still has enough power for you to easily do some serious photo editing or some light 1080p video editing. Now, since it doesn't have a dedicated GPU, you shouldn't really buy this laptop for gaming. However, the iGPU on this processor is actually surprisingly capable. The performance is actually in line with an NVIDIA MX150 or an MX230 or Intel's high-end Iris Plus graphics. Now, this means that you will be able to play some light games like Overwatch, uh, Minecraft, and League of Legends 
pretty much comfortably on 1080p at over 60 fps and even some AAA titles on low settings. But keep in mind, even the somewhat older Far Cry 5, for example, could only reach 38 fps on 720p and low settings. So again, it is not a gaming laptop, but you can still have some fun with it. Unfortunately, it's not all rainbows and sunshine for the Swift 3. The display is definitely where it shows that this is still a budget laptop. Less than 55% sRGB gamut is a really poor score for anyone considering any level of photo or video work. And obviously that means that any results about color accuracy will be quite poor as well. But it is not an unpleasant screen for other tasks like office use, browsing the internet or even gaming. Now contrast is all right, the gray balance is actually excellent, the white point is spot on and it's still a 1080p display on a 14 inch screen so it has enough workspace for most tasks. It just really lacks that color. Now the maximum brightness uh, isn't great either at 278 nits, that's definitely not enough to work in sunlight but keep in mind you won't find laptops in this price range that will do that better so I'll just give it a pass. Now back to something positive, the battery life. As expected with these new and efficient Ryzen CPUs, the battery life is actually just great. You get around 6 hours of productivity, around 8 hours of watching Netflix, or 9 to 10 hours of light use like typing and browsing the internet. So, if you take it to school or work and you forgot the charger at home, there is absolutely no reason for panic. Another positive side effect of an efficient processor is good thermal results and in a stress test that hits both the CPU and the iGPU, the chip only uses around 17 watts, uh, which its single fan has no problems cooling. The CPU only gets to around 75 degrees Celsius while the fan barely spins up. 33 decibels for a system being stressed is just unusually quiet and in light use you simply won't hear it at all which is a huge deal for everyday use in my opinion. Now opening the laptop is pretty easy, you only need to remove a handful of screws and you have access to most key components so you can clean the fans, replace the battery, replace the Wi-Fi chip and replace the PCIe SSD. Unfortunately, the memory is soldered onto the other side of the motherboard, so you cannot upgrade it at all. I have to say it was quite interesting to see just how simple the internals of this laptop really are. Now, between the tiny motherboard and the single heat pipe, there's clearly a lot more space that Acer could have used if they wanted to. Now, I know it is a budget laptop and their main focus is to just keep the cost down, but they could have easily put in an even larger battery, for example, which would be a great selling point of this already affordable laptop. Also, I think it's a huge compliment to AMD that Acer can cool a CPU that offers this much performance and even some reasonable gaming experience with a single heat pipe and a single fan. Now, even though the SSD is also upgradable, you won't have to do it for performance as this 512GB model that seems to be a default option in the EU actually performs quite well. Finally, both the webcam and the speakers are surprisingly good too and I have to say I've seen some more expensive laptops look and sound worse, which is a huge compliment to the Swift 3 considering its price. So that's pretty much it for today and I think Acer did a really good job here for an affordable laptop. It looks and feels great, it performs really well, the battery life is great, it is quiet and I think it's just a really nice laptop to carry around and to work on. Now the biggest downside is definitely the display but it's still completely fine for most tasks, it just really lacks color. So if you want to do creative things just grab an external monitor or get a laptop of a different class. Now prices and configurations will completely depend on where you are in the world and here in the Netherlands this is by far the cheapest Ryzen 5 option on the market and considering how good it actually is, it is definitely worth the 699 euros it costs. Unfortunately there are no Ryzen 7 options. But if you're in the US, you're actually lucky as Acer is selling this Swift 3 with an 8-core Ryzen 7 4700U for $649, which is only $20 more than the Ryzen 5 model I have here and you get a larger SSD, so obviously the Ryzen 7 model makes more sense there. I'll put a link down below if you want to go check it out. 
Either way, regardless of the exact configuration you are looking at, as long as the price is competitive, it is really hard to argue against what this model has to offer. Now, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below if this laptop is something that you would consider. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to this channel for more. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.